Welcome to the Truck News with Trucker Brown and just Phil or Phil on the game on YouTube. Go sub to him immediately. We're going to be talking about trucking news articles and what they mean for you and how we feel about them and giving you a candid view of what we think of the actual news that we're seeing and try to keep you informed at the same time. Mr. Phil, can you introduce yourself? Hello to the world. Hello to the good people. I am Phil on the game, a.k.a. Just Phil TV. Just Phil TV. Say again? I was like, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you here. Please. Now everybody knows TV goes off the cuff. I'm not reading your article. <laughs> That's what I got Phil for. He's a scout on the internet, finding everything that pertains to you. Phil, hit me with one. All right. So in most recent news, as we can always expect, there are some interesting things going on with the EPA. The article reads as follows. Uh, News Nation is the source. It says, despite environmental protection agencies' assertion that new emissions regulations will benefit about 72 million Americans living near freight routes by reducing air pollution, truckers caution the rules will disrupt the industry and consumer expenses. The EPA announced last month the new state emission standards for heavy-duty trucks, buses, and other large vehicles in a bid to combat climate change. The American Trucking Association and other groups continue to express concerns describing the standards as challenging, costly, and disruptive to the supply chain. Now, what, what did you what did you give me a give me a spitball of what you thought of the article? So, and and to sum it up more regulations are coming things are going to affect our industry as drivers individually especially those that are in the independent business operating sector i know there's nuances to those things and people always find a way but for the mass majority this is going to be a problem it's forcing more people to have to upgrade their equipment and in some sad cases they may have to leave the industry altogether it's a money grab that's the truth it has nothing nothing to do with the environment, nothing. I tell you what it is: is what you, trucks are lasting too long. People figured out how to delete them. They want more money. Yeah. I, I give you, I'll give you a theory of mine. This is just a theory. I have no way to know if it's true. Since we're doing news now, we have to be clear about shit like that. Oh yeah, allegedly. I, <laughs> allegedly, this is what I feel from driving the actual truck. I'm driving a truck when I was in Illinois this past time. It was a uh it was a 870 it was a a VNL 76 7, 7, 760. It had 600,000 miles on it. The truck ran like a dream. You hear me? It ran like it was just on cushions of biscuits. It nothing was wrong with it. Straight it Cadillac ran, status. Cadillac status. It ran well, had a wood grain wheel cover. I was happy. Every thousand miles, the computer put it in the shop. And I, mm. I, I think this truck runs right. It runs good. It doesn't, it, everything's perfect. The only thing that's putting me in the shop is the computer. A normal person would think if I could just take the computer off, <laughs> the truck would be fine. But of course, you can't do that. Right. So my belief is this. These companies have computers and EPA bullshit regulations to keep putting you in the shop to pull money out of the truck. But the oh, truth absolutely. is the engine is in perfect order. Yeah. As someone who's on the other side of it that works in an industry where we sell def, <laughs> it's, it's, it's our hardest commodity. We can't keep it like we literally buy it by the train car and cannot keep it in stock <laughs> because it is literally regulated by law for everyone to have it. You are telling me that farmers got to use it. Yeah. Now, now farm equipment, which that used to be the, the, the hands off that was like lead the farmers alone, but no, even farmers have to deal with emissions now. That is insanity. And I think the only, I think the only sector of trucking now, just in general speaking, I think the only sector that that isn't having to necessarily keep up with it is the oil field. But even that, I feel like, is going to come to a head at some point. So. You think them adding more regulations could be them just wanting more money? I think that's what I think it is. They just want more money. Oh, it's always about money. 
It's a multi-billion dollar industry uh, doing emissions development, not to mention all the government kickbacks. I mean, it's a it's a government hired uh, corporation. The EPA isn't isn't a government entity. They're hired by the government to regulate emissions. Jeez, Louise, man. And even and I've heard multiple and just by first hand account, I've heard multiple account excuse me, multiple mechanics speak on the fact that a lot of the emission systems that are on these newer trucks, they're not any more emission efficient than if you had properly tuned in older trucks. The problem was with the days of old and trucking equipment is that the factory tunes, they weren't set up for that. They were meant for, you know, making power. They were designed to just run. Emissions was an afterthought, which is sad in the really scope of things. But to tell the truth, if they had done their due diligence or just taken more time to develop better tune systems and better setups for them, then some of these things will happen. But that gets into the, the theory that, you know, even the manufacturers are in on it, that they're tuned a certain way, they're set up a certain way, parts are of certain design so that you have to keep spending money. My father driving 34 years tells me that the trucks you're talking about, it was normal to run to a million miles, get the top and bottom end done and running it to 2.5 million miles. That was normal. Absolutely. I mean, even now today for the ones that are financially viable to buy some of those older engines, you'll get two rebuilds out of them before the blocks no good. And maybe a third if you're, if you're fortunate enough, like I've heard one trucking couple, they got their, Peter built that has catted it up to 4 million miles and it's still running. And for y'all to the young bucks to conceptualize what 4 million miles is a regular person, one, a regular truck with one person on it takes nine years to see a million miles. Yeah. You average drivers running 120,000 miles a year. And that's a badass motherfucker doing that. Yeah. So you add that up. Nine years, that's 900,000, 20, 20, 20, 20, you know, it, it's about a million miles is nine years. When I was at Melton, a motherfucker who has a million mile patch, he's been there nine years plus. Absolutely. So you're talking about four million miles. Now, they could be teaming. We don't know that, but. Oh, yeah, they were definitely teaming. They're, okay, they're teaming, so you cut that in half. Yeah. You're talking about, you know, and now you go to a company, they give you a brand new truck. When it's time to give that truck back in 36 months, you got to get that. The, the, the computer is going haywire. Yeah. Around five, 600,000 miles. They're done. Cooked. They're cooked. It's cooked. But you know the funny thing we never talk about? The engines never blow. <laughs> We're talking about all the shit around the engine. Yeah, all the components, all the plastics, all the electronics, all that stuff fails. But the block? <laughs> the block's still ticking along. Thanks right up. Eh, you know, Granted, so there have been some bad years where there was some issues, but generally speaking, pro star. <laughs> See, <laughs> <laughs> pro star, yeah, pro star. There's certain years of Cummins yeah. that had issues, you know. Yeah, yeah, but for the most part, it's to yeah. me, it's it's un-American. It's un-American. It's disgraceful. You know, I, I I believe that we at least could have kept running trucks, man. He at least gave us that. If nothing else. If nothing else, our trucks could run. Jeez Louise, man. You know, I don't I don't you have anything else to say on that. Yeah, I mean it's it's truly sad. I mean, I have to I have to play devil's advocate because they do mention that when I and I hope I really hope it comes to fruition because I think it's beneficial worldwide that there's been that there's development of of hydrogen technology. See, I feel like hydrogen, even though it is by itself dangerous because storage is an issue, it can blow up. Seen but it. at the same time, you know, we have trucks running around with propane tanks on the back of them. So, mm. you know, me, me personally, I'm not for electric because of what it takes to create electric. Right. I feel like. Although, yes, it does solve the issue of em emissions, the things it takes to create these mega cell, super cell, hyper batteries is yeah, abusive bro. to the environment. And, and the, I don't open like air, the open air slavery market, it takes. Yes, exactly. The mining of the of the resources and the rare, rare elements and right. things of that and nature. It children is children to get it. 
it is so total if, if you guys look up where those batteries come from yeah you're gonna cry like it is bad bro and just even after they've mined an area what it does to that like it's you it's you can't even the animals can't live there nothing is is habitable after they've dug out these sources out of the ground and done their processes to collect the lithium and you know the different types of metals that they need for that versus with hydrogen yes it's going to take a serious investment but i believe overall it'll be much better it's a more natural occurring element it's just a matter of do they want to put the money behind it and and from a nerd perspective they still sound nice you know they still give off combustive sounds not the like an electric you know yeah you know when i think of what i'm thinking of a vacuum cleaner electric trucks i think I robot right and, uh, a person says they didn't have electric semi trucks in there yes they did those yes, those, those did. personnel carriers was that version of a semi truck that yes those were ai had, powered semi trucks they were ai powered semi trucks and all of them jumped off of it and they were they were omnidirectional and shit yeah yeah though, though that's what i think of when i think of that matter of fact i sent you one of a uh autonomous rail car Yes, I the 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 magnetic rail that they're saying that they're trying to develop that's going to be able to run on the standard rails, which that would be very interesting if they got that to work. Yeah, that would that would be very interesting. But you know, here we just want to keep you informed. Uh, we want to make sure you understand what's going on around you, and giving you a uh, non sellout, bought and paid for soul still intact response you know so it's not coming from the hive we we this is we see it this is what we think forget about it it's done that's it there's no other extra adding a little hollywood devil juice on it it's just the truth of what we think and like we say allegedly we're not in see, there's nothing too we're not industry insiders yeah we don't claim to be experts we observe the new give our perspective and we move on that's it no malice. On to the next one.